Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today's presentation uh, the webinar is on a, a creative utilization of urban roadway facilities with the predictive safety assessment tool, phase one. My name is Muid Islam. I'm a research faculty working at ITS, Traffic Operation and Safety Program under Center for Urban Transportation Research at USF, University of South Florida. Today, I will talk about some uh, predictive safety assessment process and how we can apply that with a simplified Excel-based tool for the highway professional or safety professionals. That will help to make an informed decision uh, about the safety and also understand the impact of exposure on the safety. Let's start. So first of all, I want to acknowledge the support I received from uh, CTED uh, for this project, even though it is a small scale project, but it, it was uh, one of my starting uh, project for uh, the safety assessment tool. The key player for this uh, uh, in this team from our project was uh, Dr. Kong Chen, Ambal Limae. He was a student, uh, he graduated and Dr. Uh, Robert Bartini and I am also thankful to my mentor and co-worker Tim Newman uh, at CH2M uh, now it is Jacobs and also Jiguang Zhao so the learning objective for this project within the limited scope of phase one uh, is the ability to understand the predictive safety assessment of urban roadway facilities so we are mostly talking about the urban roadway or suburban roadway facilities. Ability to understand the conversion of one roadway facility to another. Here we'll be talking about how we can convert one uh, facility type, roadway type to another roadway type. And uh, finally, the understanding of visualization and sensitivity of the safety analysis. So it will help the safety professional and policymaker to understand the data in terms of uh, visualization and make some kind of uh, informed decision. So with that note, I just want to mention that these analysis and the tool is all about all from the analyst, the PI, co-PI of this project, and that is on us. And the prediction number are, uh, since this uh, tool is helping to predict the crashes for different facility types. So the numbers are protected under the federal law, chapter 23 USC, section 409. So the objective for this study, we have set three objectives. The first one is to enable the safety researcher, engineer, and transportation planner at the agency level to understand, the, understand and quantify the impact of safety improvement. So we just need to understand this is not a linear, linear relationship with respect to the exposure in the fundamental of safety analysis and the evolution of highway safety manual. I will talk about that in a few minutes. So in that fundamentals, the relationship between crash frequency and the traffic exposure in terms of annual average daily traffic is non-linear. The second objective is to develop a simplified framework in uh, Microsoft Excel to evaluate safety impacts of one roadway facility to another. And here I'm giving you some example, uh, two lane undivided road to two lane undivided with two way left turn lane. Uh, the picture showing here, just a simplified picture. It can be also from four lane undivided to four lane divided road two lane undivided, uh, two way left turn lane to four lane undivided with two way left turn lane, six lane divided road to six lane, eight lane uh, divided road facility. This is just an example, but we'll see how the conversion goes and how the process works. And finally, to have an understanding of the impact of a set of improvement project related to the existing condition in a, in a simplified way, just to see the, the input of traffic flow, how much traffic flow will impact the safety of one roadway facility relative to the other. So this is just a snapshot. I will show it more details in next few slides. So as I, as 
I was mentioning the highway safety manual has evolved over the years since 2010. And before that, there was a lot of evaluation going on on the safety analysis. And recently, this is uh, published by the uh, Florida Department of Transportation, just uh, giving a snapshot of the performance in terms of travel and also the economy, population, in, in investment in, in transportation infrastructure. So just looking at the Florida's uh, economy and the growing population, the exposure is growing. As you see here, 207 billion vehicle mile travels that increased from 2011, 8%. And considering the safety numbers, one of the safety numbers performance measure is the roadway fatalities. And as you see here, it is about 3,176, about 31% increase since 2011. Uh, comparing the other state, big, bigger state, uh, say Texas and uh, California, Florida is uh, one of the top uh, states with the fatalities, even though the land area and the exposure in terms of vehicle mile or the land miles are relatively smaller compared to uh, uh, Texas and California. So we have a serious issues with the roadway safety. And since the economy is growing, the Florida will be more envisioned to in invest more on the transportation infrastructure. With that, we need to understand the safety of the, you know, the roadways uh, and in other facilities to make sure the people are driving safe safely. So as I, I was mentioning uh, you that uh, the safety has evolved uh, quite a bit from previous uh, standard or previous policies that we followed geometric design of highway and streets. So where the safety was more hidden in the compliance with the standards, warrants and the guidelines in the design procedure. But it was never been a we have never been able to quantify the safety in terms of frequency or severity or by roadway type. So the highway safety manual provided as the procedure, uh, well-researched methodology and uh, process, how to quantify those safety in terms of frequency, in terms of severity, and in terms of spatial characteristics. So it is more about the substantive safety. And it is not about that. It is more about programming the projects from the programming, planning and scoping, preliminary design, and also the construction. So I will go more a, a bit of depth how the highway safety manual can play a role in, um, in this uh, safety analysis with, with respect to the substantive safety analysis. So here, how the highway safety manual is integrated in the highway safety management. Uh, as you see here, we have four uh, major steps or the four major uh, milestone in a project or in any improvements. So first starting with the safety uh, system planning where uh, we identify the needs and the programming the projects that will happen in the next phase. But before that, we try to identify the site with the promise of safety benefit from the safety improvement by identifying the target crash type in the network and also prioritize our expenditure in that network. So at the system planning, we are trying to develop a project for the next phase. And the next phase is project planning and preliminary engineering. Here we identify the alternatives and choose the preferred solutions by identifying the target crash type for the project and also try to evaluate the effectiveness and cost of the uh, countermeasure that will be under each alternatives. And also we, we would like to compare the changes in the crash frequency under each alternatives. So at this phase, we are trying to identify the preferred alternative that will be most beneficial in terms of crash reduction and with a better cost effective performance. Right, and the third phase is the design and construction. So here we are more uh, 
looking into the detail uh, highway safety manual application with the predictive analysis. So here we try to evaluate the performance measure impacted by the design changes or the design exception. So here we are applying more of the predictive safety analysis that is, uh, you know, very in-depth in the micro level analysis. So this is a bigger part and the bigger performance measure at any steps. And the last one is the operation and maintenance where we try to modify the existing condition to maintain and improve the safety and efficient operation by applying the, um, the predictive crash analysis or also the historical crash uh, uh, perspective. So from both angles, we try to identify any crash pattern at the existing location, evaluate safety effectiveness of the potential countermeasures and modify policies and design criteria for future planning and design. So this is also important. And in this slide, I'm just showing step by step, but actually it will move back to the system planning. So it is a loop process where system planning will give some input for the project planning and preliminary engineering. That phase will give you some input for the design and construction. And finally, the operation and maintenance will give some input to the system planning. So it is a loop process that will go uh, in a more comprehensive manner. And I was mentioning you that Highway Safety Manual has a lot of analytical uh, aspect. So one of the implementation is the interactive highway safety design model. It is a uh, package that uh, evaluate the safety of different roadway facilities based on the uh, historical crash and also the, the existing condition of the roadway and the traffic condition. Similarly, safety analyst is another package that helps to pre predict the crashes for different condition and uh, crash modification factors clearinghouse that is also repository under the federal highway that also documents all the studies that that have found different effective countermeasures and uh, other details there this is just a snapshot of the highway safety manual implementation by different states. Um, as you see, this is uh, taken from 2014. Uh, so some of the states are adopting highway safety manual and implementing, and some of the states are leading in that role. And these days, uh, 2018-19, the color has changed. Obviously, more states are uh, ambitiously uh, taking steps to understand highway safety manual, implement in their project and take it as a major resource to design more safer roads on their facility, on their jurisdiction. So now coming back to the data elements that is implemented in the highway uh, predictive safety assessment tool. So we have identified segment level and also the intersection level. Uh, looking at the uh, segment level, we have different facility type, as I mentioned, two lane undivided, that is 2U, two way un two lane undivided with uh, center tunnel lane, that is 3T, four lane undivided, that is 4U, 4D is the four lane divided, and 5T is two lane undivided with, a uh, four lane undivided with uh, center tunnel lane. So these are the, uh, naming convention under the highway safety manual uh, will not go details but just to make you aware of those uh, terminology then we also look into the segment length traffic exposure in terms of uh, annual daily traffic on street parking presence uh, average uh, median width presence of uh, street lighting speed limit number of driveways uh, it could be uh, based on different location industrial residential, uh, different types of uh, land use will have a different numbers of driveways. Then uh, distance of fixed objects, roadside fixed objects, and density of the roadside fixed object. And looking into the intersection roadways, uh, intersection data elements, we have 3SG indicating the three leg signalized intersection of 4SD means four leg signalized intersection, 3SD means three legs stop control intersection, and 4SD means four leg stop 
four leg stop control intersection. So we have different types of intersection here. Uh, we have the traffic exposure from different approaches. We also consider number of approaches with left turn, right turn, and left turn signal phasing. Also consider left turn signal phasing type. Also looking into number of uh, lane, uh, no, maximum number of lanes that is crossed by the pedestrian. Also we look into the number of bus stops, schools or liquor store within 1000 feet of the intersection center. So let's look about the, look at the methodology or, or the working steps in the, in this tool. So first of all, in the highway safety manual for uh, part C, we apply the safety performance function. And uh, safety performance function are based on different uh, types of collision, whether it is single vehicle, multi-vehicle, or vehicle pedestrian, or vehicle uh, bicycle crash. And it could be at the segment level or it could be at the intersection level. Then we apply the CMF and we also apply the local calibration factor. Since this tool is developed for the Florida, so it is more, the calibration factor are more uh, customized towards ro uh, Florida urban roadway facilities. Then we split the analysis into two ways, existing facilities, for example, we are looking into two-lane undivided road, and our future facility or the, the existing facility will be converted to a proposed facility. For example, it is two-lane undivided road with the center town lane. So we have that the conversion of two-lane to 3T, 2U to 3T. So we are introducing the center, uh, center town lane by doing, in order to do that, we need to understand the conversion of the factor, conversion of the facility, how that will bring the benefit or what is the number indicates. So here the conversion factor is the predicted crashes for proposed facility, that means it is 3T divided by the predicted crashes of the existing facility, that means it is 2U. So we are considering the ratio of proposed facility and the existing facility. Then we are looking into the crash severity distribution by crash types for those two facilities. One is the existing facility, another is the proposed facility. And then we, we want to see the impact of exposure, the traffic volume on the crash uh, frequency both of the existing and also in the proposed facility. So this box is showing you uh, that the process we implemented in this tool. So this is more detail, as I mentioned, the single vehicle, multi-vehicle uh, SPF, uh, safety performance function, then applying CMF, crash modification factor, considering different geometric uh, consideration. Then we apply the calibration factor based on the local uh, roadway facility. And in this case, we applied for Florida. And graphical output, here I will show you some uh, user-friendly display of the results uh, and also the sensitivity analysis in terms of crash frequency or the uh, traffic volume of the crash frequency. So just a basic formulation for the predicted crash frequency by facility type. Here we are looking into the study area, Florida, uh, different urban roadway facilities, surface street mostly it is arterial or arterial facilities, roadway facilities. We are uh, categorizing those facilities into segments and intersection based on the highway safety manual definition. And the basic formulation is the safety perform safety prediction model is predicting the crashes in terms of annual average predicted crash with uh, considering the safety performance function, crash modification factor, and the calibration factor. This slide shows you the list of uh, the roadway improvement project that is implemented in this uh, predictive safety assessment tool. We have identified 15 uh, roadway improvement project uh, divided into roadway section at the intersection. So on the top, you will see the roadway widening for the segments and the bottom portion will show the intersection improvement. So we are looking into the existing facility as you see here, the right 
to columns are showing existing facility and the proposed facility. And based on the highway safety manual uh, terminology, we identified those in different uh, uh, facility by different names. So this is the application in terms of local roadways in Tampa area, mostly looking into the roadways we have here. Uh, the existing facility, as I mentioned, two lane undivided, that is to you, and different limit of the roadway segment and how we can propose those segments into a wider road because we are looking into the widening roadway facilities improvement. So we identified those locations and tried to limit those uh, segment by one mile. So this analysis is based on the predicted crash frequency per one mile of the roadway segments. Then it can be projected to the length of segment of your interest in your jurisdiction. It can be extended in that way. So this is a Google map location of those uh, roadway segments in Tampa area, uh, about a one mile length uh, between two intersections within, within a segment limit. Let's come to the safety assessment tool. Uh, the front page of the tool uh, will indicate the uh, short description of the tool, how to use it, the purpose of the tool, the user guidance, and in the input interface, we'll see different color coding. And each color coding has some meanings. Uh, so from the user standpoint, they need to input some values based on the uh, local condition they are considering for improvement. So the blue cell will represent the input of the from the user standpoint. The green cell will represent the HSM or the Florida specific uh, values. We'll see in a few minutes. And uh, some output we'll see in different colors. So here I'm showing you the 2U to 3T conversion, two-lane undivided road to two-lane undivided road with center target, some dashboard with the uh, uh, results uh, display, and the sensitivity analysis of uh, traffic volume or the crash frequency. So this is just a snapshot of the of the tool uh, in the Excel format for two led to uh, undivided two led to undivided two led with the center tall led. I'm not sure the uh, video will work, but let's try for a few seconds if it works. Let's see. So as I'm showing you the top, the facility conversion, and on the left side, we have the existing facility. On the right side, we have the proposed facility. And as I, as I mentioned to you, there will be some color coding in the uh, Excel. So there will be blue color cells, so where the user can input. As I'm showing you, there are some inputs here. And, uh, all those uh, input will be reflected accordingly in the subsequent cell in that corresponding facility sections. So there are some drop downs where you can select the appropriate uh, land use type. For example, here the driveway types for your facilities. And also you can uh, change the color the count of the driveways as uh, is showing in this video. Then you get the frequency of the crashes per mile per year. And there are other crash modification factor where you can input some of the uh, roadway condition based on your local condition. And the speed limit, uh, as you see here below 30, above 30, And finally, we see the uh, the conversion factor here, and also see the distribution by crash types, as you see in the two uh, table. And here we see the display of the uh, results uh, for two U to three T. So on the left side, we'll see the existing condition. On the right side, we are seeing the 
proposed condition by crash types and the dial in the middle is showing that con uh, conversion factor. Here we are seeing the uh, sensitivity analysis in terms of the crash traffic volume on the crash frequency, total crash frequency. And <clears throat> as you see here, there are two slides here uh, on, the, on the bottom side where you can slide to the left in, indicating the decrease or on the right indicating the increase of the traffic volume and you see the changes happening for different types of crashes so it will give you more visual sense of the impact of traffic volume on the frequency predicted crash frequency so it, this is just a snapshot of what i showed in the video short video so this is the dashboard with the output a conversion factor at the center and the crash types on the both sides for different crash types and also the the sensitivity uh, display for traffic volume and crash uh, frequency and we also categorize by different types of crash frequency so you can select what type of crash uh, you want to see their frequency and the impact from their uh, traffic volume this is the overall result uh, for all the facilities we considered for segments and intersection. We uh, categorized the fatal and injury crashes and property damage uh, crashes. So according to Highway Safety Manual, we try to uh, classify those two crash type by severity. One is the KABC, fatal uh, incapacitating, non incapacitating, and possible injury under fatal and injury crash, and property damage that is the O uh, uh, category that we also considered that and we sum up together to get the total crash, right? So based on different limit of the segments. Here, uh, the same result, but here we'll adding the conversion factor. As I mentioned, it is the ratio of the proposed facility divided by the existing facility. So some of the cases we have, as you see, some of the cases it is below one, some of the cases it is above one, and sometimes it is uh, some uh, higher values. So we try to explain and understand why the values are higher, and that one of the explanation could be the the coefficient used in the crash prediction model that can predict more crashes for particular facility type. But the proposed facility is totally, uh, you know, different uh, settings and different geometric condition compared to the existing facilities. So this is uh, here I'm showing the no change uh, as a horizontal red dotted line with respect to that horizontal line, how much different facility conversion is uh, performing. For example, if we convert 2U to 3T, how much that is uh, performing and is that below one or above one? Below one will indicate it is safer to convert. That means the number of uh, crashes will be reduced. Where we have more than one, that it indicates that the frequency of crashes for that particular target uh, facility will be increased compared to the existing condition. Here I will show you just an example of two scenarios. One is 2U to 3D on the Sly Avenue from uh, north of 56th Street to Hardy Road. Uh, it is very small, as you can see, to limit of the segments. It is about one mile. And we are converting from 2U to 3D, as I mentioned. And uh, this is the, their sensitivity analysis, uh, considering the traffic volume on total crash and we see about 20% reduction of crashes if we convert 2U to 3T. And another, on the right side, we have 2U to 4U to 4D, that means four lane divide, undivided road to four lane divided road, as I'm showing you here in the small, simple schematics. The crash reduction will be significantly high, about 80% because of the traffic volume consideration and also the potential impact from the other side of the road. Uh, with respect to the, uh, the tool that we develop under the uh, scope of this project, there are some caveats, uh, those are listed here. 
the calibration factor for six lane and above was not uh, considered in this uh, phase of the study because uh, we tried to follow the national study and some of the uh, consideration for facilities in florida was not complete for six lane and above so that that's why we could not consider it separately for this project one-way roadways are not included in the analysis, which are mostly the downtown area. We'll see more one-way roads. So we have not included uh, specifically here. Another uh, thing is uh, the two-way uh, two uh, left turn lanes, that is the double left turn for six-lane facilities that were not considered as part of the improvement because that is a standard based on the traffic volume and geometric condition for many uh, location in the urban areas and as I mentioned six lane and other and above facilities were still under review under the HSM edition 2 while the project was uh, in progress and also finally we did not consider uh, or focus on too much on the pedestrian and bike uh, specific parameters in this tool with that, we have some conclusion and one of the major highlight is from the exposure level we are, uh, we have every day and annually. Here the study from uh, AAA Foundation for, for Traffic Safety uh, based on the driving survey uh, indicates that overall Americans drive about 11,500 miles each year, which is about roughly two round trips by driving from San Francisco to DC. And it is increasing uh, over the years. So at this standpoint, it is really important to design the road or understand the importance of crash prediction with a well-researched methodology that is highway safety manual in this case, and some simplified tool that is presented in here with the predictive safety assessment tool for the safety professional decision maker to make an informed decision at the planning phase of the roadway improvement projects. And this is uh, critical. In this phase, we are just looking into very simplified roadway conversion. Hopefully in future, we'll look into more complicated situations that will be more uh, helpful for the safety professionals. Second point is the conversion factor will indicate the increase or decrease of the crash. So the crash decrease will be indicated as one minus the conversion factor when the conversion factor is less than one. But it will in indicate the increase of crash when the this is this difference one minus the conversion factor is greater than one. And in terms of sensitivity analysis, it shows a very simplified uh, way to visualize the impact of traffic volume of the crash prediction by types of crash. And also it is interesting to see the intersection of the existing and proposed facility, how they are performing at one set of traffic volume. That is also interesting to understand for different facility conversion, how they are performing at what point of traffic volume they are performing similar or close enough traffic uh, crashes. With that, I am uh, finishing my presentation. If you have any question, comments, or suggestion, you are welcome to contact me. Uh, this is my email address, so you are free to call or email me as we progress. And if you have any discussion, we can do further from here. Thank you for your patience.